All right, greetings everybody. Terror of the Lord, part four. Chaplain Bob Walker here. Light of the World Ministries in John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This is going to be kind of a quick thing on hell. Uh, you could make a big major study on just hell, but I'm going to hit some of the highlights and get the points. Now, in the Old Testament, uh, the word for hell is uh, Sheol, generally spelt S-H-E-O, I think U-L or O-L, S-H-E-O-L or S-H-E-O-U-L. I forget. I'm just going by memory. You know, this is not a comprehensive study on hell. But generally, Hebrew scholars said that this means the grave. And there's basically three definitions of hell. The grave, and then there is Gehenna, which is a Greek word, G-E-H-E-N-N-A, if I remember correctly. Also called the Valley of Hinnom, H-I-N-N-O-M, I believe. And they likened it unto a garbage dump in uh, a valley near Jerusalem. They used to dump the garbage there and it would just burn and burn and burn. And uh, if you listen to Jehovah's Witnesses, they'll take the very first definition of hell, which is the grave, uh, Sheol, the pit. And uh, they'll say, oh, see, that's it. There's no flaming, burning hell. That's, you know, that's Greek mythology. And Jesus... You know, a loving God would never do that to people. Uh, but those people, you know, the Jehovah's Witnesses, W-I-T-L-E-S-S-E-S, -S -E -S, Witnesses, because they don't have any wits. They uh, they don't even they don't even know who Jesus is. They think Jesus is Michael the Archangel, and uh, those false prophets told us the world was going to end in 1975 and 1976. But guess what? It didn't. Jesus didn't return in glory, and we're still here, so they're false prophets. And for a while there, they said, well, we really didn't say that, but yeah, we did. But now we have new light, and their new light is from the angel of light, which is the prince of darkness. But I digress. So, all right, so Sheol generally means grave. Gehenna is likened to the flames. And then in the Greek, there is what they call Tartarus. Uh, I think it's spelled T-A-R-T-A-R-U-S. Uh, they even named a Greek god after it. Um, he was sort of like Tartarus. I think Tartarus is the, the place. It's the deepest abyss of hell where the fallen angels are some of the fallen angels are locked up in chains of darkness unto the great day of judgment for them. And uh, let's see, the, the king of hell was called Hades. So yeah, you kind of get the idea, you know. But uh, so keep that in mind. There's generally three definitions of hell. And if you want to know what it means, you got to read the context. So, all right, let's get going here and we'll take a look. Now, there is a thing called the, uh, what some call the law of first mention. When you do a search of a word in the Bible, generally the context of where it appears the first time will give you an idea of the meaning of the word and the rest of the context as you read the rest of the scriptures. So it's always good to uh, take a look. Um, I, use, I used to use the Blue Letter Bible uh, for Bible lookup. Some people use... Uh, Oh, I forget the name of it now, but there's different things you can use to look up words in the Bible. And, um, but Blue Letter Bible was Chuck Missler. He was Army Intelligence, Military Intelligence. He was also one of the ones that was involved with Chuck Smith, Chuck Smith of Calvary Chapel, 
Um, you could go to Calvary Chapel and hear a sermon, and if you were a Satanist, you wouldn't even be offended. I mean, you know, that's all. It's not even milk. It's a couple drops of skim milk in a quart of water. That's basically their sermon. Baby would starve on that, you know. But, uh, all right, first time hell ex comes up in the Bible is in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 32, and we're going to skip to verse, start in verse 16. They, Israel, provoked him, the Lord, they provoked him to jealousy with strange gods. Now remember, God's a, a jealous God. He loves his bride. And he doesn't want his bride cheating on him, which I don't blame him. Wish I'd have known that when uh, I was a kid and had a girl that loved me to death. Threw that away pretty quick, like an idiot. But, uh, you know, it's the way it goes. They provoked him to jealousy with strange gods. With abominations provoked they him to anger. Remember, an abomination is something that God really, 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 really hates. I mean, there's God hates sin, but an abomination takes it to several layer, several levels above that. I mean, it's like way up there. So they sacrificed Israel unto devils, not to God. To gods whom they knew not, to new gods that came up, uh, came newly up, whom your fathers feared not. Of the rock that begat thee, thou art mindful, and hast forgotten God that formed thee. Now who's the rock? The rock is Christ, if you believe Paul. Okay. 19. And when the Lord saw it, he abhorred them. What is abhorred? It means to hate a lot. Great hatred. And when the Lord saw it, he abhorred them because of the provoking of his sons and of his daughters. And he said, I will hide my face from them. I will see what their end shall be. For they are a very froward generation. Children in whom is no faith. They have moved me to jealousy with that which is not God. They have provoked me to anger with their vanities. What is a vanity? I mean, something that's worthless. And I will move them to jealousy with those which are not a people. I will provoke them to anger with a foolish nation. That word nation there, do you know that word nation is the same word as Gentile? Oh, yeah. Same word. Sometimes the translators use nations. Sometimes they use Gentiles, depending upon the context. Verse 22. For a fire is kindled in mine anger and shall burn unto the lowest hell. Ooh, wait, aren't we talking, oh, wait, what, 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 what's this uh, Bible study about? Oh, that's right, hell. H-E double hockey sticks, yeah. How come the Jehovah's Witnesses will never read this verse? Oh, hell's the grave. You know, you go to sleep and, and, and they lay your body in the grave and that's it. And if you were bad, God won't wake you up from the, your sleep. But if you're really good and, and join the Watchtower organization and you got your name on our membership list, well, God's going to wake you up from your sleep and you're going to live forever in this Jehovah's kingdom. Uh, I, don't, I don't think the membership log of the uh, Watchtower Bible Society is uh, the book of life. But hey, you know, what can I tell you? Hey, there's some Baptist churches that think uh, their membership roles are uh, the book of life. But, yeah, what can I tell you? For a fire is kindled in mine anger and shall burn unto the lowest hell. 
Does that sound like the grave? Me, uh, me neither. And shall consume the earth with her increase and set on fire the foundations of the mountains. Ooh, yeah. Now, I've done an entire Bible study on fire. The Bible uses fire symbolically and literally. Oh, yeah. Let's go to 2 Peter chapter 3. Uh, I can't let this one go. Do you know there's people, uh, generally Hebrew roots, sacred name people, Paul haters, that'll tell you that 2 Peter doesn't belong in the Bible because 2 Peter affirms Paul as an apostle. And they'll say, oh, well, Peter didn't write 2 Peter. It's It doesn't belong in the Bible. And Paul's writings don't belong in the Bible either. They'll tell you. Well, I'm looking forward to meeting Paul one day. And I have a feeling that people that deny Paul are not going to be given a chance to meet him. But I don't know. That's up to the Lord, not me. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 1. This second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you, in both which I stir up your pure minds by ways, uh, way of remembrance, that ye may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets. Ah, there's holy prophets, and then there's unholy prophets, like the Jehovah's Witnesses in uh, the 1973, when they said the world was going to end by 1975-76. And they're wrong, or were wrong. Yeah. Oh, did you know they lost about a quarter of their membership? Yeah, because people live, believed them. Uh, which were spoken before by the holy prophets and of the commandment of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior, knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers, walking after their own lusts, and saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the evolution. Well, that's what they'll tell you, but creation. For this, they are willingly are ignorant of, that by the word of God, the heavens were of old and of the earth standing out of the water and in the water, whereby the world that then was, being overflowed with water, perished. What are they talking about? Genesis 6, a flood of Noah. The world, God baptized the world with the flood. Oh yeah. And what do you do with the what do you do with water besides drinking it? You take a bath in it, right? Well, that's what baptism is. It's kind of like a ceremony where you are washing away sins of the flesh, in a sense. That's kind of what it's, that's how I see it. I could be wrong. There's probably more to it, but you know. So God baptized the world with water and all the giants and all the wicked people died. Oh yeah. <laughs> so, Uh, let's see. Verse 6. Whereby the world that then was, being overflowed with water, perished. And what I love, in Matthew 24, when they're talking about the pre-trib rapture, they'll say, As it was in the days of Noah, one was taken, and one was left. One was taken, one was left. Who was taken? And who was left at the end of the flood? Uh, the wicked were taken and Noah and his family were left behind. And then they'll say, oh, well, I want to be left behind. I don't, oh no, they'll say, I don't want to be left behind. I want to be taken. And they want you to think that that's the preacher of rapture. You know who was raptured? The wicked were raptured in the flood of Noah. So it's funny, 
that the so-called Bible scholars will tell you the Bible means the exact opposite of what it says. You want to be taken or do you want to be left? I want to be left behind. They could be taken with the flood, but this time it ain't going to be the water. It's going to be the fire. See my playlist on fire, people. Whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perished. But the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto fire. Oh, see, the first time is water, and the next time is going to be fire. Remember, God told Noah that the bow, the rainbow, was a sign of his promise that he would never flood the earth with water again. Oh, yeah. And if you never read this stuff, you need to read the whole Bible. Start in Genesis. Or if you don't like reading, get, get the Bible on, uh, I almost said cassette. Boy, I'm showing my age, huh? I, well, how about eight tracks? <laughs> oh, boy. I'm really showing my age. Um, on MP3, you know. You, you can get the New Testament off Amazon on MP3 or CD for, yeah, you know, about $25 delivered. Really? You know? Yeah. I suggest King James uh, by Alexander Scorby. S-C-O-U-R-B-Y. Wonderful. But the heavens and the earth, which are now, by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto fire, against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. What is perdition? It means to fall. Uh, Judas Iscariot was called the son of perdition. Yeah. Verse 8. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing. What does it mean to be ignorant? It means you lack knowledge. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. So the next time somebody tells you, uh, well, in the book of Revelation, it said it was shortly going to come to pass. Okay. And it's been 2,000 years, Bob. That Does that sound like shortly come to pass? Well, uh, to the Lord, 2,000 years is like two days. You know, if I told you I, I'm going to give you $100 in two days. Is that shortly coming to pass? Yeah, I think so. You know, so they always want to apply human attributes to the Lord. And it don't work that way. So when you read the Bible and it says, shortly come to pass, and the scoffers say, oh, shortly come to pass. Well, a day with the Lord is as a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. Keep that in mind. Verse 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And that is a dirty word nowadays in the church. Repentance. If you go to a church and they never mention repentance, uh, you're being taught by a wolf or the wolves. Repentance means a turn away from your wicked ways. And there's actually people I'll tell you, oh, it doesn't mean that. Uh, just believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you're going to be saved. Well, so are you telling me I could be a hitman for the mafia and keep my job and believe on Jesus and I'm going to go to heaven? Wow, that's great because, boy, being a hitman for the mafia, boy, that pays good. Yeah. Uh, you, they, they really want you to believe that stuff. All right, so, flames of fire, verse 10. Here's the punchline. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. There's that fire. 
the earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. The works and, and of this world are going to be burned. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? I'm, yeah, verse 12. Looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens, being on fire, shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace, without spot and blameless, and account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation. Well, yeah, the Lord suffered a long time waiting for me to grow up, and I pray that I'm doing the things that he wants me to do, but yeah. An account that the long suffering of our Lord of salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul. Wow. So the next time somebody says, Paul's not an apostle. Well, here it is. You got Peter calling him a beloved brother. Hmm. See, they always want to take you the, back to Judaism. They want you to read that Babylonian Talmud. The wisdom of the rabbis. Yeah. The tradition of the elders that Jesus didn't speak very kindly about. An account that the long-suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you as also in all his epistles, his letters, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood. Yeah, some of the things Paul writes is hard to be understood. Which they that are unlearned and unstable rest or wrestle, as they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction. Those people that deny Paul are unstable and unlearned, and they wrestle Paul writings and other scriptures unto their own destruction. Period. Ye therefore, beloved, seeing ye know these things before, beware, lest ye also, being led away with the error of the wicked, the Paul haters, among others, Fall from your own steadfastness, but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I hope that's what I'm helping all of you to do, to grow in knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and grace. To him be glory, both now and forever. Amen. All right, let's go back to... Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Uh, do, 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 Deuteronomy 32, verse 21. They have moved me to jealousy with that which is not God. They have provoked me to an anger with their vanities, and I will move them to jealousy with those that are not a people. I will provoke them to anger with a foolish nation. Verse 22. For a fire is kindled in mine anger and shall burn unto the lowest hell and shall consume the earth with her increase, and set on fire the foundations of the mountains. Boy, Second Peter fits right in, don't it? Fits right into Deuteronomy chapter 32. All right, let's read verse 23. I will heap mischiefs upon them. I will spend mine arrows upon them. What kind of arrows? They shall be burnt with hunger, 
and devoured with burning heat and with bitter, bitter destruction. I will also send the teeth of beasts upon them and the poison of serpents of the dust. Uh, are these literal serpents? Or are these figuratively serpents? As in that old serpent called the devil and Satan, uh, the dragon, the great red dragon, also called known as the dragon uh, and the that old serpent. Revelation uh, 12. I'm not 100% sure. Could be both. Hey, uh, this is uh, what? The Terror of the Lord, part four, right? Hell, verse 25. Deuteronomy 32, 25. The sword without war. The sword without and terror. Terror. Isn't this whole series about terror? Oh, yeah. The sword without and terror within shall destroy both the young man and the virgin, the suckling also with the man of gray hairs. Well, that's me, the man of gray hairs. I said I would scatter them into corners. I would make the remembrance of them to cease from among men. Were it not that I feared the wrath of the enemy, lest their adversaries, their enemies, lest their adversaries should behave themselves strangely and lest they should say, our, high, our hand is high, and the Lord hath not done all this. See, the enemy is going to say, we did this to the Israel, not the Lord. Oh, yeah. See, the Lord gets jealous when the heathen thinks that they're responsible for all the wicked things that happens to God's people. And they attribute their victory to their God, the devil. So, were it not that I feared the wrath of the enemy, lest their adversary should behave themselves strangely, and lest they should say, Our hand is high, and the Lord hath not done all this. Oh yeah, they think they did it. Verse 28. For they, Israel, I think they're talking about Israel here. For they are a nation void of counsel, neither is there any understanding in them. Oh, that they were wise, that they understood this, that they would consider their latter end. What's going to happen in the latter end? God's people are going to be in the time of Jacob's trouble. Problems. We're getting closer every day. Verse 30. How should one chase a thousand and two put ten thousand to flight except their rock had sold them and the Lord had shut them up? For their rock, Christ, is not as our rock, even our enemies themselves being judges. Uh, let's read Paul real quick. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 4. Yeah, let's, let's go to the beginning here. Now, remember, Corinthians were residents of Corinth, a city-state in Greece that Paul was established a church in, and he's preaching to them. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 1. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant. What is ignorant? Lacking knowledge. Doesn't mean you're dumb. Doesn't mean you're stupid. Just means you don't know something. When it comes to rocket science or aeronautical engineering or brain surgery, I'm ignorant. I admit it. When it comes to the Bible, not so much. Moreover, brethren, I would not. Now he's talking to the Corinthians here, Greeks. I would not that you should be ignorant how that all our fathers, our fathers, were under the cloud and all passed through the sea. What is he talking about here? 
Well, if you bothered to read the book of Exodus, you would know that there was a cloud during the day that led Israel and a pillar of fire by night. And they passed through the Red Sea. Remember, uh, did you ever see uh, Charlton Heston, the Ten Commandments? Uh, Moses, the, the sea parted and Israel crossed across, uh, in dry land to the other side of the Red Sea. And Pharaoh and his army tried to do the same thing and they got, uh, they got swimming lessons. Yeah. That's what he's talking about here. He's saying, our fathers, Greece, was divorced Israel. Yeah, they were. At least some of them were. This is another reason why they hate Paul. Because if people read Paul, they would know that Paul's telling them that these Corinthians, their fathers, were with Moses when Israel went through the Red Sea. In Jeremiah 3.8, the Lord told Jeremiah that he was going to divorce Israel. Divorce. He says, you're not my wife. Get out of here. Where did, where did the wife go? She went to Greece, among other places. But in Jeremiah 31, 31, which we covered in the last study, uh, the Lord said he'd make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. And your modern church will tell you that uh, those antichrists over in the Middle East are all of Israel. Well, last time I counted, there were 12 tribes of Israel and Judah was only one. So these people make God a liar. Well, they are. They work their other father, the devil, who's a liar. Yeah. Moreover, brethren, I would not that you should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea and were all baptized unto Moses. Yeah. When they went through the Red Sea, they were, in a sense, baptized. And were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea and did all eat the same spiritual meat the manna verse 4 and did all drink the same spiritual drink for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them now remember they went out into the desert and the Lord told Moses to strike the rock and it would provide water and it did Chaplain Bob, what are you talking about? Oh, you, oh, you've never read the book of Exodus. Well, then this doesn't mean anything to you. You know, you you can't just read the last few chapters in a book like the New Testament and expect to understand how it all ends up. It, it just don't work that way. You gotta, you know, you read a novel, you gotta start from the beginning, you know, and the beginning is Genesis. And did all drink the same spiritual drink, for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. The rock was Christ. Unless, of course, you're a Catholic, then the rock is Peter, uh, who founded the Catholic Church and today's Pope. That's their rock. Yeah. Yeah. All right, let's go back to Deuteronomy 32. One of these days, I'm going to finish Deuteronomy 32. Uh, verse 31. For their rock, the enemy, is not as our rock, even our enemies themselves being judges. For their vine is of the vine of Sodom and of the fields of Gomorrah, their grapes are grapes of gall. Their clusters are bitter. Their wine is the poison of dragons and the cruel venom of asps. What are asps? It's a very, it's a very dangerous snake, serpent. Uh, 
Is not this laid up in store with me and sealed up among my treasures? To me, the Lord, belong of vengeance and recompense. Their foot shall slide in due time, for the day of their calamity is at hand, and the things that shall come upon them make haste. For the Lord shall judge his people and repent himself for his servants, whom he seeth that their power is gone, and there is none shut up or left. And he shall say, Where are their gods, their rock in whom they trusted, which they did eat the fat of their sacrifices and drank the wine of their drink offerings? Let them rise up and help you and be your protection. Oh yeah, you know, when the bad things happen to you, and you're sacrificing to Satanists, well, let Satan be... Let him rise up and help you and be your, your helper and protection. Verse 39. See now that I, even I, am he, and there is no God with me. I kill, and I make alive. I wound, and I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. See, the Lord can kill you, and the Lord can bring you back to life. The Lord can wound you, and the Lord can heal you. And I'm a living testament to the wounding and healing. And there is none that can deliver. When the Lord has you in his hand, and he's going to do something to you, there is nobody that can help and protect and save you from what he's going to do. Verse 40. For I lift up mine hand to heaven and say, I live forever. If I wet my glittering sword, and mine hand take hold on judgment, I will render vengeance to mine enemies, and will reward them that hate me. But Chaplain Bob, my preacher at Calvary Chapel, says God loves everybody. Well, maybe Calvary Chapel uh, is the enemy. I will render vengeance to mine enemies and will reward them that hate me. I will make mine arrows drunk with blood and my sword shall devour flesh and that with the blood of the slain and of the captives from the beginning of revenges upon the enemy. Rejoice, O nations, with his people for he will avenge the blood of his servants and will render vengeance to his adversaries and will be merciful and will be merciful unto his land and to his people. And Moses came and spake all the words of this song in the ears of the people, he and Hoshea, the son of Nun. And Moses made an end of speaking all these words to all Israel. And he said unto them, Set your hearts unto all the words which I testify among you this day, which ye shall command your children to observe to do all the words of this law. You know, fathers are supposed to be the spiritual leaders of the family. But it is sadly lacking today. And the enemy set it up that way. I mean, you know, they've made the taxes so bad that you know, fathers has got to work two jobs. Mommy's got to work two. And uh, don't have any time for the kids. So, you know, let's throw them into public school where they could do a book report on uh, Harry Potter and the devil, you know, wizard or whatever. Or when I was in high school, it was The Hobbit. Yeah. You know, and we could teach them pronouns and, uh, you know, pride. Yeah. Anything but the Bible. Do you know when I was in elementary school, we actually had prayer and Bible reading in Jesus' name? Yeah. That was a long time ago, people. Ye shall command your children to observe to do all the words of this law. 
For it is not a vain thing for you, because it is your life, and through this thing ye shall prolong your days in the land, whither ye go over Jordan to possess it. Oh, yeah. Oh, let's go read Psalms chapter 9. Uh, I guess we'll read the whole chapter. What do you say? To the chief musician upon Muthalaban, a psalm of David. I will praise thee, O Lord, with my whole heart. I will show forth all thy marvelous works. I will be glad and rejoice in thee. I will sing praise to thy name, O thou most high. When mine enemies are turned back, ooh, there's those enemies again, they shall fall and perish at thy presence. For thou hast maintained my right, my cause. Thou saddest in the th throne judging right. As in right from wrong, right? Verse 5, thou hast rebuked the heathen. Thou hast destroyed the wicked. Thou hast put out their name forever and ever. O thou enemy, destructions are come to a perpetual end. And thou hast destroyed cities. Their memorial is perished with them. But the Lord shall endure forever. He hath prepared his throne for judgment. And he shall judge the world in righteousness. He shall minister judgment to the people in uprightness. The Lord also will be a refuge for the oppressed, a refuge in times of trouble. People, there is a time of trouble coming. And the only thing we're probably going to have is what we're carrying on us, the things on our back, and the Lord. I mean, it's coming to that. People don't believe it, but it's coming. And all the church world, all they care about is tithes. Now, I've come to that conclusion. Uh, when's the last time you heard me talk about tithes? Yeah, you don't. The only time I talked about, I did do a video on tithes, but... Uh, where I told people that uh, tithing was for Israel to give money to the Levitical priesthood so that they could survive. And unless your pastor is a member of the tribe of Levi, he's not entitled to a tithe. Now, if you want to do a, an offering, well, that's, that's a different thing. But it's not a tithe. Because the tenth only belonged to the Levites. And unless you're pastor can prove to you from genealogy that he's related to uh, Levi of which Moses was a Levite he's a liar and deceiver so verse 6 O thou enemy destructions are come to a perpetual end and thou hast destroyed cities their memorial is punished uh, perished perish with them but the lord shall endure forever he hath prepared his throne for judgment and he shall judge the world in righteousness he shall minister judgment to the people in uprightness the lord also will be a refuge for the oppressed a refuge in times of trouble and they that know thy name will put their trust in thee for thou lord has not forsaken them that seek thee when you look for the Lord with all your heart, you will find him. He will find you. Verse 11, sing praises to the Lord, which dwelleth in Zion. Declare among the people his doings. When he maketh inquisition for blood, he remembereth them. He forgetteth not the cry of the humble. Have mercy upon me, O Lord. Consider my trouble, which I suffer of them that hate me. Thou that liftest me up from the gates of death, that I may show forth all thy praise in the gates of the daughters of Zion, I will rejoice in thy salvation. The heathen are sunk down in the pit that they made. In the net which they hid is their own foot taken. You know, the evil ones 
make plans and they might set a trap to kill people but actually what they're doing is they're making a trap to kill their own soul really when you think about it verse 16 the lord is known by the judgment which he executeth the wicked is snared in the work of his own hands Higaion, Selah. Verse 17, here's the punchline. The wicked shall be turned into hell. And if you're a Jehovah's Witness, you'll say, oh yeah, everybody goes to the grave. Uh, but that's not what it means. Well, yeah, everybody, you know, almost everybody's going to die. Believe it or not, there's going to be a a group of people in the end times that never taste of death. They're going to be alive when the Lord returns in glory and they're going to be given resurrected bodies and they're never going to see death. But other than that, before that happens, everybody's going to see death with the exception of, well, I shouldn't say it, but Elijah and Enoch uh, never tasted death, but I suspect there are going to be the two witnesses that are uh, killed by the beast or the false prophet, I should say. Uh, well, the beast. I think it's the beast. Yeah. Well, they're going to be killed. And then they're going to be raised to life. But uh, other than that, everybody's generally dies. So the wicked shall be turned into hell. And all nations, and all the nations that forget God. Nations. Same word as Gentiles. The wicked shall be turned into hell, and all the nations that forget God. Did the UK forget God? Has the European Union forgotten God? Has the United States, and Canada, and New Zealand, and Australia, have they forgotten God? The wicked shall be turned into hell and all nations that forget God. For the needy shall not always be forgotten. The expectation of the poor shall not perish forever. Arise, O Lord, let not man prevail. Let the heathen be judged in thy sight. Put them in fear, O Lord, that the nations may know themselves to be but men. Selah. You want to see King David uh, in the book of Psalms, chapter 16? Here's a messianic prophecy. Now remember, by the flesh, Christ was related to King David. Or should I say, King David was related to Christ. Because he was the root and offspring of David. Psalm 16. Let's start verse 8. I have set the Lord on always before me because he is at my right hand i shall not be moved therefore my heart is glad and my glory rejoiceth my flesh also shall rest in hope for thou shalt not leave my soul in hell what what people i did a study did you know, uh, I think it was called Three Days That Changed the World. Did you know Christ went to hell? What, Chaplain Bob, are you crazy? No. All the righteous went to hell. They went to a place called Abraham's bosom. I did a Bible study on that. And he preached unto all the righteous that went to hell. Old Testament wise. Abraham went there. Isaac went there. Jacob went there. All the 12 patriarchs went there. Daniel went there. All the prophets went there. They all went to Abraham's bosom. It was the uh, non-smoking section of hell, if you catch my drift. Well, the non... Uh, it, it wasn't the... Um, it was the air-conditioned section, I guess you could say. The non-heated section? Yeah. Christ went there for three days and three nights and preached unto the spirits in prison. 
Yeah, and then he was resurrected unto heaven to the right hand of the Father. Oh, glory be to that. Yeah, I know people don't believe that stuff. What are you talking about? Christ went to hell. Are you some kind of a heathen? No, absolutely not. I might act like a heathen sometimes, but uh, I, I try not to be one. Uh, we all struggle with sin, right, people? Oh, yeah. Uh, but, uh, yeah, three days that uh, change the world. Maybe I'll put, I think I'm going to post that on my community page so you can find it real quick. Uh, three days that change the world. And uh, uh, Abraham's bosom. Might be the same thing. You know, come on, give me a break. I've, I've done over 1,500 Bible studies over the last 9, 10 years. I can't remember them all. Maybe it's all this GMO food they're giving us and I'm getting Alzheimer's. I don't know. But King David went to hell. And people will say, well, I don't believe in the Trinity. Well, Trinity is not a Bible word, but Godhead is. And the Bible clearly teaches that man, who was made in God's image, man was made in God's image, and man has a body, a soul, and a spirit. Your body dies. What about your soul and spirit? Well, they go somewhere else until they get the resurrected body. For thou will not leave my soul in hell. King David knew that he was not going to be left in hell forever. For thou will not leave my soul in hell, neither wilt thou suffer or allow thine Holy One to see corruption. Who's the Holy One? Christ. Christ is the only one in a human body that was a Holy One. Neither will thou suffer thine Holy One to see corruption. Thou will show me the path of life. In thy presence is the fullness of joy. At thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. Boy, what a beautiful... This is a messianic prophecy right here. So... How about Psalms 86, 13? For great is thy mercy toward me. For thou hast delivered my soul... From the lowest hell. Proverbs chapter 5. Boy, I wish I'd have listened to this when I was a 20-year-old something or other. Um, Proverbs is generally attributed to Solomon, David's son, King David's son. And... Uh, he was attributed to being the wisest man that ever lived, which I won't argue with. Verse 1. My son, attend unto my wisdom and bow thine ear to my understanding. What is wisdom and understanding? Knowledge of God's word. Duh. That thou mayest regard discretion and that thy lips may keep knowledge. For the lips of a strange woman. What is a strange woman? Not a non-Israelite, a heathen woman, perhaps one of the children of the devil. I don't know. For the lips of a strange woman drop as a honeycomb. Honeycomb, sweet, right? Sweet lips. Oh, yeah. And her mouth is smoother than oil, but her end is bitter as wormwood. Sharp as a two-edged sword. Her feet go down to death. Her steps take hold on hell. You want to play around with the strange woman? You're going to end up in the same place where she goes. Her steps take hold on hell. She's going stepping down to hell. You heard of a highway to heaven or a, a stairway to heaven? How about a highway to hell? Yeah.
No, thank you. Lest thou shouldest ponder the path of life, her ways are movable, that thou canst not know them. Hear me now, therefore, O ye children, and depart not from the words of my mouth. Remove thy way far from her, and come not nigh the door of her house, lest thou give thine honor unto others, and thy years unto the cruel. Lest strangers be filled with thy wealth, and thy labors be in the house of a stranger, and thou mourn at the last, when thy flesh and thy body are consumed, and say, How have I hated instruction, and my heart despised reproof, and have not obeyed the voice of my teachers, nor inclined my ear to them that instructed me. I was almost in all evil in the midst of the congregation and assemblies. Yeah. You should have listened to godly instructors. And I didn't do that. I, uh, I know about that evil woman. All right, Mar Proverbs 27, 20. Hell and destruction are never full. Wow. Can you imagine that? The wicked are like, Oh, uh, Lord, you can't send me to hell. It's full. So you got to give me other accommodations. You know, uh, no, hell is never full. Hell and destruction are never full. So the eyes of man are never satisfied. And I believe that is talking about those that want to be wealthy and rich. They can never have enough. Isaiah 5.14 Therefore hell hath enlarged herself and opened her mouth without measure and their glory and their multitude and their pomp and they and he that rejoiceth shall descend into it. Did you ever notice hell is always talked about beneath and heaven is always talked about above. Oh yeah. I think what I'm going to do I'm going to look at Isaiah 14. You can't do a study on hell without doing a thing on Isaiah 14. Um, yeah. I'm going to do Isaiah 14. Yeah. I've already done it, but maybe I'll have to do it again. I don't know. All right. Well, um, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' precious name, all glory and on to him. Amen.